Well, good morning, church, or good afternoon, whatever it is, uh, the time that you're, you're tuning into us here online. Uh, welcome to Church Online, Trinity Church Online, and we're just so glad that you're with us. And um, I know Del and I have uh, just uh, been able to connect with, with so many of you over uh, Zoom, but, you know, your faces, many of your faces come to uh, our memory during this time as we are all called into self-isolation but yet we just we're praying for you and we're just standing with you that believe that this time is a time where you just come alive in the things of christ the things of jesus who is ever with us and ever present and so uh, it's a real joy for me to just uh, bring the message to you today but before we do can we just pray i just want to pray thank you lord for this day Thank you for all those who are turning, uh, tuning in today. And I pray in the name of Jesus, if you, Holy Spirit, would go into um, our homes right now at this moment and bring these words to life because it's your message, Lord, we want to hear. It's all about you. And so we glorify your name and thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, it's a real honor for me to bring the word to you. And uh, I just, I, I've been, had some uh, thoughts that the Holy Spirit and just revelations the Holy Spirit has given to me during this time. Um, and I wanna share them with you around the story of Job, uh, but not specifically just Job, but Job's wife, who little in, is written about in the story of Job. And yet, the little tiny insights, the nuggets that are given, really show how God was in the process of walking Job's wife through uh, something uh, of suffering to uh, the double portion. And we'll get into that. So I've entitled this Job's Wife, Hidden Suffering. Job's Wife, Hidden Suffering. And... Uh, just so I'm accurate, I want to read it to you because sometimes I just uh, I go off on little goat trails. So <laughs> here we go. Let's read together. When we think of the suffering of Job in the Bible, or when we think of suffering at all, we generally think of Job, and rightfully so. He got all sides of the attack upon his life, but someone else suffered too. Job's wife. Can you imagine as a wife, a mother, a woman of stature in her town, face what she had to face? She lost everything, just like Job. As a mother, to lose seven sons and three daughters would be devastating. It's no wonder why she blurted out to Job when he was mourning openly about his suffering. Job, why don't you just curse God and die, as it says in Job chapter 2. She was in a broken place. We tend to think down upon her for being weak in this moment. I'm sure when God was considering what Job could withstand, he was also considering what his wife could withstand. God is fully aware of each and every one of us in the process of life. He had said to Satan, God had said to Satan, um, would you consider my servant Job? He in fact was fully aware and thinking of Job's wife. She must have been a wise and righteous woman or Job never would have asked her why she was acting like a faithless and unwise woman in Job chapter 2, verse 11. You don't make that kind of statement without there being a representation of a life of righteousness and holy leading up to this time, holiness leading up to this time. There's no record of her answer. Yet great detail of Job's conversations with friends followed in, in uh, chapter 3 and on. She was married to a man who was blameless and upright and conducted his life and household in this manner. 
she would most likely by this account have had a close walk with God. So it's no surprise when Job received the double blessing, the restoration of everything lost. His wife also received the double blessing. And even though she isn't mentioned, Job grew old as he enjoyed seeing his seven sons and three beautiful daughters who were the most beautiful in all the land, it says. He uh, grow, grow and have grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Job's wife also saw not only the suffering, but the blessing and the double portion. We generally put pressure on ourselves about how we go through life, through trials. We face suffering and try to find a reason why we are suffering. In our current environment of the social media, we're bombarded with conspiracy theories and uh, false prophecies or explanations of all sorts, like Job's friends brought to him as Job was going through this suffering. Job's wife, little is known about her. Nothing of great extent was written but yet, if we allow the spirit of revelation to open this story, we see that God was writing her story as well as Job's. Her life of suffering mixed with blessing, of trial mixed with double portion, is ever before us in this story and serves as a great example for us today. When we go through difficulties, when we go through times of suffering and God's world is being affected by this virus that's affecting everyone on this earth. Let's tune in to the strongest voice of all, and that's the voice of the Holy Spirit who speaks to us. Let his voice speak to us the loudest. Amen. I was considering this story and thinking about um, how God speaks so powerfully in these times. You know, we, we've been called into self-isolation and, and many of us, uh, we, it, it's, it's a lot easier because we, we have our wife or we have children around us or we have family members around us so we're not specifically alone but there are some of you that are suffering alone and I just want to encourage you God sees you he sees fit that you could withstand and stand through this time there's some things he highlighted to me the first one was God is fully committed to your and my process during this time. His plan of walking us through this difficulty. He wants deep relationship with every single one of his children, his sons and daughters, and those who are yet to come in the kingdom. Not one of us is exempt. It's by no measure chance or coincidence that you're on the earth at this time. God has seen fit for this season of life and he's considered you that you could stand through this process. He knew you could stand through this. He knew it. He's promised that if we fix our eyes upon him, we will see the blessing in the end. We will see what he's doing. Nothing can separate us. I love how I've heard time and time again people saying, God is drawing me into that secret place. That during this time, the secret place has just, it's kept coming up in, in everything that uh, I've listened to. And I love how, you know, the Psalms, David knew what the secret place was. Psalms 31.20 talks about, he will hide us in the secret place. I believe that's what God is doing right now. He's hiding us in this secret place. And we spend time with him. We hear his voice. We hear his intentions of 
these days what he wants to speak in and through us, how he wants to use us in this present environment. Psalm 81 verse 7, I called to you in trouble and I, an and, and I answered you in the secret place of thunder. And that's what it seems like right now. It seems like the voices and everything can just be thunderous, all the, the, the threats of this virus growing. And yet in the secret place, God answers us and he speaks to us his love and his mercy and his covering upon us. What a powerful word. And of course, many of us have heard the Psalm 91 being being just going all around our, our world, and it's wonderful. And it says in verse 1, he who dwells in the secret place. And that word dwells literally means to sit, to sit in his presence. I just love it. I love it. I love what he's doing. You know, so God knows that we can withstand this process. He's drawing us into that place of deep relationship with him. And, you know, I think one of the greatest things that we, uh, we need to, to just see that God is doing is that he's bringing his church to life. Not just one single man or woman, the person who stands in the pulpit or, or an event or, or um, some kind of program, but rather individuals every single member of his body. And you know, everything that we do in church, you know, there's intention and thought out uh, process through it, and, and it's good, and we always desire to seek God's presence through it. And yet, the greatest thing is when you and I, his sons and his daughters, step out into the gifts and the callings that he has upon every single one of our lives. He's created every single one of us for purpose. And that is what he's calling us to. Do you know, I love um, what Jesus said, that in him, sorry, that was said about Jesus, uh, Acts chapter 17, verse 23 to 28, it says, in him we live and move and we have our being. It doesn't talk about the environment or anything like that, but in Jesus, we live and move and have our being. So I pray that blesses you today. I just uh, I encourage you, I've, I've less left the list of scriptures to go and dig in and see what the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. And I bless you today. I love you, family. Del and I miss you, and we look forward to the day that we can be together again, just celebrating in the house of God. But in the meantime, Let's press into what he's doing right at this moment. He knows us, he has us in this process, and his life and purpose is being lived through every single one of us. Bless you, we love you, and we'll see you soon.